worked a hardship on a class of citizens in this country known as who? Seventh day Adventists. Who observed the seventh instead of the first day of the week as the Lord's Sabbath? There were five or six of them indicted, and some of them the second time by the grand jury of this country for the violation of this law. In fact, these people, these seven day Adventists, were the only ones that were indicted for Sabbath breaking during the two years in which this law was enforced. I'm sure there were more seven day Adventists in Arkansas. There were more. But only five or six stood up for the truth. And they were indicted and I'm sure they were sent to jail. Now, I will read for you an account by A.G. Jones. You know A.G. Jones? Mm -hmm. He was making a presentation at the Senate Committee and uh, he was making a presentation about this problem. And this is what it was given an opportunity before the Senate Committee in Washington, D.C. to make a presentation in, the, in defense of the repeal of that law. Let me, sir, illustrate the operation of the present law by one or two examples. A Mr. Swarigen came from a northern state and settled on a farm in Dash County. That is Arkansas. His farm was four miles from town and far away from any house of religious worship. He was a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And after this having this sacredly observed the Sabbath of his people Saturday, by abstaining from all secular work, he and his son, a lad of seventeen on the first day of the week, went quietly about their usual vocation. They disturbed no one, interfered with the rights of no one, but they were God and remained for a short period and seven day Adventists suffer for this law. And we are told that the deciding issue in the last days will be the mark of the beast or the seal of God. So this is just a glimpse of what was to come in our time. Was this the end of the story? I just made a continuation. Alas, no sir. They were turned out, and the old man's only horse, his sole reliance to make bread for his children, was levied on to pay the fine and cost, amounting to thirty-eight dollars. The horse sold at auction for twenty-seven dollars. A few days afterwards, the sheriff came again and demanded thirty-six dollars. Eleven dollars balance due on fine and cost and twenty-five dollars for board for himself and son while in jail. Yeah, they have got it. And when the poor old man, a Christian, my you, told him with tears that he had no money, he promptly laid it on his only cow, but was persuaded to accept bonds, and the amount was paid by contributions from his friends of the same faith. Sir, my heart swells, bursting with indignation as I repeat to you the famous story. The chief Jonas is trying to protest and defend the repeal of that standard. And in another, he has written a whole article, a whole document about what happened, but there is another section where him and other friends sent hundreds of dollars to support other families whose breadwinners have been sent to jail because of this. Story. So we need to know that we need to prepare for the coming crisis. It happened, and it will happen again. Except this time, it will be very serious. And many, many adventures will come from us. Unless we stand firm in our faith with God, many people will give in and receive the mark of the beast. So it's a very serious issue. I have never seen this. I have never, have you ever read this anywhere? Yeah? And our, our church should know this. But it is completely excluded. Until you always think that the Sunday law is something that is distant. It happened during the time of our pioneers. Anyway, I just promised that I, I'll show you that so that you can understand when she writes about country living that we need to move away because of the problem of Sunday law.
So how far is far? We were discussing yesterday. We will know today how did we get there. So, but today, let's get down to some true education. We want to look at some examples. And today we want to go back to the beginning. Adam and Eve. What kind of school did God design for them? And what happened? What went wrong? Many of us have been wondering, what is the alternative from the secular system? And as you are aware, the school term has begun. The school term has already started for most schools, so you must be wondering, what is my next move? So let's look at the model school. The system of educa education instituted at the beginning of the world was to be a model for man through all after time. As an illustration of its principles, a model school was established in Eden, the home of our past parents. <coughs> the garden of Eden was the schoolroom, nature was the lesson book, the creator himself was the instructor, and the parents of the human family were what? The students. We have been discussing about her, and our friend Nathaniel took us back to the origin that when we were created, we were given what diet? A plant diet. So, if you want to understand what is the ideal system of education, we should also go back to Eden and see what kind of school did God set for us. And we can see here that nature was a lesson. That is where we are being told, get out of the cities, go to the countryside. That is where you can learn through education. Right? And the creator himself was the instructor. And we, the human family, are the students. When Adam came from the creator's hand, he bore in his physical, mental, and spiritual nature a likeness to his maker. God created man in his own image. And it was his purpose that the longer man lived, the more fully it should reveal this image, the more fully reflect the glory of the Creator. All his faculties were capable of what? Of development. He was just fresh from the Creator's hand, so his faculties were capable of development. And their capacity and vigor were continually to increase. Past was the scope offered for their exercise, glorious the field opened for their, to their research, the mysteries of the visible universe, the wondrous works of him, which is perfect in knowledge, invited man's study. Face to face, had to have communion with his maker with his high privilege. And he remained loyal to God, all this would have been his forever. Throughout eternal ages, he would have continued to gain new treasures of knowledge, to discover fresh springs of happiness, and to obtain clearer and yet clearer conception of the wisdom, the power, and the love of God. More and more fully would he have fulfilled the object of his creation more and more fully have reflected the Creator's glory. In the Garden of Eden were two systems of education. There are always two systems of education. One under the tree of life, and the other under the tree of good and evil. By faith man was only to eat of the tree of life, but was not to touch of the tree of good and evil. When tempted by Satan, Eve, instead of using the truth of the word of God and faith in the loving creator, she appealed to reason. Many times when we are called into obedience, we appeal to reason. We reason out. We think that maybe this, this requirement doesn't make sense. Look at this, how Eve reasoned. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes. Now, Eve has put aside the instruction that thou shalt not eat of that tree. Now she is looking at the tree and reasoning with herself. It looks good for food. Okay? And it is pleasant to the eyes. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. Eve is using reason. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. When we use reason instead of faith and truth, then we begin to fall. 
And if you look at the common system of education, it uses reason. <coughs> reason. We must start from doubt. And let's say we must start from the first principle. How do you arrive at this? They use the reason. But Eve was to use faith. Thus says the Lord. God has said it, we do it. When we start reasoning out, then you begin to rationalize and soon you break God's commandment. Age after the age, the curiosity of men has led them to seek for the tree of knowledge. And often they think they are plucking fruit most essential, when in reality it is vanity and nothingness in comparison with that science of true holiness which will open to them the gates of the city of God. Human ambition seeks for knowledge that will bring them glory and self-exaltation and supremacy. I want to get knowledge that will make me be called doctor. Doctor in charge. Isn't that a good title? It will immediately transform me. Right now I am just a mister. But if I can become doctor, I think you will have more respect for me. It is glory. I can burn the midnight lamp. I can be away from my family so long as I can achieve that title. I put it behind my name. When you introduce me, you must introduce me correctly. Doctor. It is what? We are looking for glory and self-exaltation. And supremacy. When I am doctor, then you should not challenge me. You know, one time somewhere in our church, uh, we had a discussion. We had somebody very senior from a very senior institution of our church in terms of the book, the Word of God. And he mentioned something about the translation and I stood up and said to him, Sir, I think that that may not be quite correct. Well, the man was shaking with anger. He was upset. How dare this minion say that I am not telling the truth? And he was wrong. You know, supremacy, when you are in that level of that high order of secular education, when you have reached the doctor and PhD and all, and somebody dare say that you don't know something, it brings all the rage that how can he bring it up? I'm sure even in the medical world, when you have the nurses in the, in the hospital, can she dare correct the doctor? Uh, maybe my wife can say that. I mean, that is an unpardonable thing. I mean, how dare you? How can you challenge the doctor? So, you know, the secular system sets up a chain of command that is it is, it is untouchable. Glory, self-exaltation, and what? Supremacy. Thus, Adam and Eve were influenced by Satan until God's restraint was snapped asunder and their education under the teacher of life began. They gained the knowledge which God had refused them to know the consequences of transgression. I want you guys to think about that issue. That our system teaches pride, supremacy, self-exaltation. It teaches that from kindergarten to the highest level of learning. It matters not what skills it gives you. It matters not how much money that system delivers to you, but it destroys your soul. You become a most unmanageable person. You have so much pride that God can't use The tree of knowledge, so-called, has become an instrument of death. Satan, listen, and I think we read something like this the other day. Satan has artfully woven his dogmas, his false theories, into the what? In the structure. There is nothing wrong with the skills that you get from your system, even where there are sometimes they may not be so accurate. But there's nothing wrong with the knowledge. The problem is that it comes packaged with certain <coughs> artful theories and dogmas. Okay? From the tree of knowledge, he speaks 
the, mo the most pleasing flattery in Christ the higher education. Thousands partake of the fruit of this tree, but it means death to them. Christ says you spend money for that which is not bread. You are using your heaven and trust the talents to secure an education which God pronounces foolishness. foolishness. You are spending your heaven entrusted talents. It includes money, time, and energy to secure that which God will pronounce what? Foolishness. foolishness. Upon the mind of every student should be impressed the thought that education is a failure unless the understanding has learned to grasp the truths of divine revelation and unless the heart accepts the teachings of the gospel of Christ. The student who, in the, in the place of broad principles of the word of God, will accept common ideas and will allow time and attention to be absorbed in commonplace, trivial matters, will find his mind becoming dwarf and enfeebled. The mind must be, he, he will lose the power of growth. The mind must be trained to comprehend the important truths that concern eternal life. That is why among many of our Adventists, eternal life is not in their mind. It's actually like some distant thing, some fail. The present is what comes. Even though they will sing, we are much in design, they really don't believe that. Because of what they have gone through, the system of training they have gone through has destroyed eternity from their reckoning. There is an education that is essentially worldly. Its aim is what? Success, Success in the, the what? The hey, let's read together. The what? The to secure this education. <laughs> With what? Unnecessary knowledge. The world accounts them learned, but is that a correct statement? Yes. Does it tell the truth? Yes. Does it tell the truth, Does it back there? Yeah. Uh, Jeremiah 8 verse 9. It is the truth. Okay. Jeremiah 8 verse 9. I'm sure we can check on that. Alright. Now let's see. They eat of the tree of widely knowledge, which nourishes and strengthens. Isn't that what I told you earlier? When you eat the tree of widely knowledge, you are, it, it nourishes and strengthens your pride. By the time you finish from school, you look around and say, what do you know? How do you know? How do you mean? Have you seen the graduation party? Are they small? If the means can allow? Are they small? They're not small. Who are they praising? The Heavenly Father? Who gave them the brain? No. It nourishes their quarter education, but it strengthens their pride. And you know pride was the problem of who? Whose problem was pride at the beginning? Satan. So you can know whose system that one is. Because it always has the signature of Satan. Pride. In their hearts they become disobedient and they estranged from God and their entrusted gifts are placed on the enemy's side. Much of the education at the present time, 1800s, much of the education at the present time, 1888, 1890 is of this character. I think this was a problem of the 1800s. We still have it today. Is it there? The world may regard it as highly desirable, but it increases the peril of the students. So it's the problem. The highest level of world education is what? Doctor of Philosophy or PhD. The word philosophy in its original Greek meaning is love of wisdom or Greek wisdom. This was this is a Greek term, right? So when you get a PhD, you have a love of wisdom. 
that which we study. Is it the wisdom from above? Therefore, the highest learning of modern man is called, the, is called by the term the love of wisdom. The Greek wisdom. Okay? So that is what, that is so great. There you go. Love of wisdom as such for underlying causes and principles of reality. Did you see that definition? As such for underlying, you know when you start doing your, your PhD, you are searching for the underlying causes and principles of reality. They say that wisdom, philosophy, is man trying to discover his surroundings apart from God. You want to find out. And so that's why when you start to write some project or some, some PhD thesis on something, it is something that you are trying to establish, to research, and, and then you bring it out and you defend it apart from God. That is PhD. A study of the principles of human nature and conduct. Right? A quest of truth through logical reasoning rather than factual observation. These are all definitions of philosophy. And so all men of PhDs, it is that such for the underlying causes that is apart from the Bible and God. The wisdom of this world. Corinthians 1 verse 19. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of his world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that. So the wisdom of this world is foolishness in God's sight. While the education is based on reason, human intellect and senses. All right? It is earthly, it operates in the plane of the physical and the mental. The end result of world education that rejects God are plain in the book of Romans 1. It drives man to the level of brutes and brings the worst to him. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not, as neither was thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they did what? Yes. The rest of the story of that chapter of Romans is so disgusting. There's another kind of education that is very different. Its fundamental principle is stated by the greatest teacher the world has ever known is what? Seek ye first the kingdom, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. In fact, in Job 28, verse 28, what does it say? And unto man he said, Behold, hey, hey, hey. I should have had a chorus. Hey. The people that are, we should, this is, this should be our, okay, maybe we are not in an education class. Job 28, verse 28, everyone who is interested in true education, we were talking about the wisdom of the world, let us get the wisdom from above. What is the definition of wisdom according to the Bible? And unto man, he said, he said behold, the fear of the Lord uh -huh. is wisdom. I, I want somebody to read for me nicely. So that everybody, some people are not sure. Somebody read for me that verse, loud and clear. The Bible says, And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. Mm -hmm. And to depart from evil is understanding. Is understanding. So if you say that you have the love of wisdom, and you don't have the fear of God, that is false wisdom. That is foolishness. That the person who fears God and who departs from evil 
Ja, ist Christoph. Da ist der Bank und jetzt nicht auch Christoph. His aim is not selfish. It is to honor God and to serve Him in the world. The studies pursued and the industrial training followed should have this object to give. We are there to serve the world. Medical missionaries, hello. That is the training we should have. To go and help others. Very soon there will be no preaching. It's just going to be what? Medical missionaries. The word of God is studied, a vital connection with God is maintained, and the better feelings and traits of character are brought into exercise. For the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and better than all other knowledge is an understanding of His word. But where shall wisdom be found, and where is the place of understanding? This is Job, again, Job 28, and tell us where it begins. Man knoweth not the price thereof, neither is it found in the land of the living. Did you know that wisdom is not found in the land of the living? You will not find wisdom at the University of Nairobi or the University of Rongo. It is not found in the land of the living. It is not found in your professors or in the textbooks of this world. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it. And the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold. Whence then cometh wisdom? And where is the place of understanding? Seeing it's hid from the eyes of all living, and kept close from the fowls of the air. God understandeth the way thereof, and he knoweth the place thereof. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Behold God exalted by his power, who teacheth like him. Understand ye brutish among the people, and ye fools, when ye be when will ye be wise? Now listen, he that planted the ear, shall he not hear? When God designed the ear, he looked at all the issues of sound, how sound travels and reflects, and how it penetrates the different parts. And then he designed the ear. You won't tell me that you cannot hear. You can hear better than he. He that chastises the heathen, shall he not correct? He that teacheth man knowledge, shall he not know? When God designed the brain, he had taken into consideration the things about reason, calculation, memory, storage, processing. I mean, he, you know the brain of a human being, all the computer storage that have been ever created can never equal the storage of one human brain. And when he did that design, and that the brain can only be fed by simple food, where is my friend Nathan? Very simple, but I need so much uh, complexity like computers. When he did that design, you want to tell me that now we know better than the design. He will not know that we actually know better, we have better knowledge we can get than we can get from his word. That when people go to schools of this world, they despise the Bible, written by the Creator. So they think they know more than their Creator. That's why this verse was written. He that teacheth man knowledge, shall he not know? The Lord knoweth the thoughts of man. No, sorry, there's something that I missed. He that formed the eye, shall he not see? When God was creating the human eye, he had to consider all the issues of light, how light travels, how the light affects the different parts of our eye. And up to today, man has a lot of guesswork. They don't quite know how the eye functions. The human eye is very complex. And when God designed that eye and placed it in the socket, he considered the matter of light. Are you wanting, you want to tell me that he that designed that eye cannot see? So we can see better than him. And tell people that no, it is not the earth that goes around there. It is the earth that goes around the sun. And not the sun going round now. 
we can see better than our creator. Because he has put it down in his word. In Joshua chapter 10. Joshua prayed for what? For the sun to do what? To stand still. Did the sun stand still? And the moon also stood still? But we are told that now the earth is the one that goes down the sun. So he that formed the eye, he cannot see so you can see better than him. You know, feeding from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, it does damage to our thinking. It drops our thinking. The Lord, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of man that they are vanity. Blessed is the man whom thou chastenest, chastenest, O Lord, and teachest him out of thy door. We learn, it should ever be kept in our mind that true education comprises of truth and faith. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. truth. But without faith, it is impossible to please it. For he that cometh God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that casually, is that what he said? Casually, diligently seek him. Thus the word of God teaches us and purifies as we feed on it daily, our minds are, are likened. Education in the Garden of Eden. God had for our first parents the school was the Garden of Eden. And our parents were the students. The garden was the classroom. All be taught from the Bible. You can begin from the Bible and then go on to investigate. There is nothing that the Word of God doesn't teach. Even dreaming of wealth. And, learn from you. and so it is unfortunate that when we go to school, we leave the source of knowledge as we are trying to seek knowledge. It is my prayer that we consider, we rethink our understanding of education to know that the theater is, should be our teacher. There is no other teacher that can better teach us than he who created us, who gave us the brains, he gave us the eyes and the ears to see. And we should not rest. The Bible says, cast is he that does what? Cast is he that does what? Hey, we have a challenge here. Is Jeremiah chapter 17? Let's go back to Jeremiah what? 28. What? Cast is he that what? 17. Verse 5. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusted in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. We should not put our trust in man or in the things that man has set us. Let us put our trust in God. We shall be like a tree planted by the river, which does not fear when the sun, when the, when the God comes because he's always is fed from the strength. It is my prayer that we shall put our true education to be based on the word of God and let's go back to the basics. God did not create Adam and put him in a city. He put him in the countryside. Let's learn from nature and let us learn any field, any skill that recognizes God as the source, as the creator. Any field that exalts and afflicts God and starts from the word of God. Whatever is true, 
whatever is of good report, whatever is noble, if anything, is it Philippians 4 8? Anything that is true, that is consistent with the word of God, is worth spending our time. But remember that it should be the truth, it should be taught in a truthful way, and it should be what? Present truth. Let us not venture into fields of learning that cannot help us now. Let us learn useful knowledge that can be practical, that you can use immediately. And God bless you. Amen. We can close with a word of prayer.
it has been modified. It's not an apple. It is some chemical. That is why it doesn't go bad. Tomatoes. Most of the tomatoes you see in the market, they don't go bad. They stay for a long time. They don't have a refrigerator in the market today. Alright, so those tomatoes, some of them are GMO. That's what you hear, GMO. But they're not, and then their seeds, they, they change them so that they do not reproduce. So that you can keep buying the seed from who? From Monsanto. But when they come, they don't tell you, they say, oh, this is a better seed, it will give you better yield, but they want you to discard your original seeds so that once you plant theirs, you don't, you cannot replant it because you try to replant it, it will not yield. Mm -hmm. So you have to keep buying every time, every season, people walk to the agro to buy seeds. And those seeds are killing people. So that is why he's very apart about finding, especially that roundup. The thing that makes people lazy not to go and dig their shamba and spray everything, it stays in the soil for more than six months. So don't think that you will spray and wait for two weeks. It has been shown that even after six months, Roundup is still in the soil. And by then, you have harvested the crop. You've planted and harvested. And so what you are eating, that's why we are seeing a lot of cases of cancer today from people who don't even smoke, who don't even eat meat, They're just eating modified. So we need to look at those maize, those seeds that the old our fathers used to plant, which you can harvest and replant again. But we, we, we discarded them when we were told this is better. Season. They can be found. If you, if you look for them, you can find them. Uh, so, so it is, uh, yeah, and uh, it's not going to be found with a lot of ease as a sort of thing. You, I mean, we want to live and make a lot of sacrifice. It took Monsanto through one acre firm just a few days to eliminate that just a few days, just a few days to eliminate the indigenous potatoes in all these areas. Most of it, 99% of the potatoes you eat here are genetically modified. 99% number one is uh, number one is corn, and they are saying, right, the, the way Brother Sam is saying, it's when, you, when they put it six months, even if you bring your original indigenous. It Affected. Yes. It will be affected. If you plant on the same soil where well, it's done, that it, it will be affected. That is what they did in Mexico. Because if you go By the way, the roundup, when you spray it on your farm, that soil is dead. It kills all the microorganisms that help your plant to grow. The soil is basically dead. So if you have done Round up on your farm, you'll have to wait for years for it to regain its original So you remember he said, uh, uh, we studied chapter 8 of Daniel, you remember? Mm. By what? Crafts. Crafts and policy and through what? Peace. They came peacefully and they told guys, hey, we are going to give you free fertilizer at a cheaper price. We are going to bring you the seed. We are going to monitor and give you everything by craft and peace. And people say these are the best guys. And they hugged them and welcomed them into their homes. And they did it. And now they have stayed back. Now you are a slave for the next of your life. Yeah. You have to go back and buy from the, their seeds. Because you cannot replant your seeds. That's what they have done. You better study what these guys are doing. Genetically modified food. Number one, corn. The maize you are eating. Maize you're eating. Where do you see today the, 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 the uh, which, which cow? Uh, the yellow maize. The yellow maize is disappearing. What about the purple maize? It's not there. What about the Mexican red maize? Where is the red maize? It's not there. What about the white maize with the, uh, what do you call that section that attaches itself to the cob? That section normally reddish. Yeah, the, the old one has a reddish section right now. Yeah. So you just can't take it. Like the one we put there is uh, indigenous organic. When you look at it, you see the reddish section right there. And how will you take it and go and look at yours at home? And you 
see that you ask, there's not another rich man. Because you are, you, are, you are drinking from the poisons of prophecy. And they are very happy. Because they know the web is very complex. So you better get it. Here is back to it. You need to watch this. Because this again will teach you how to work your soil and restore your soil. Very important. So that you can eat what is called nutrient dense foods. <coughs> and food. I told you the other day of this cancer um, naturopath in the United States of America who was arrested. And this time they refused to bail him out. So they sent his tomato to the lab, the tomatoes to the laboratory because he was claiming that his tomato has a lot of potency to be able to combat cancer. When they did that, they said there is nothing in this tomato like it can cure cancer. When he was able to appear before the court once, they said, I am very grateful you guys have brought that tomato, but that is not my tomato. You, what you've tested is not my tomato, it's your tomato, and I know it cannot cure cancer. But my tomato will cure cancer. They say, go, let me go and give you my tomato and test it. When they, when they tested it, iron content, this is 70% higher than the other one. And so you realize that you can even be a medical missionary, you are using the same tomato, I'm told, use a tomato, you are using that tomato, no results. The same tomato. It's true. No result. The same garlic, no result. The same, same thing, no result. Why? Because that one has more chemicals.